All right, so that now that we finish our playlist on financial mathematics and basic arithmetic, we're going to move on to the next topic, which is going to be algebra and equations. So just to give you a little bit of a recap of what algebra is, if you're presented with something like this, so an equation ax plus b equals to c, then the whole idea behind solving an algebraic equation is you choose something that you want to solve for, and then you just rearrange the equation. So with an equation, we know that we can do the same thing to both sides. So for example, we could just uh, subtract b from both sides so that this side becomes just ax. And then we can divide or multiply both sides by the same number. In this case, we can divide both sides by a. And then the solution to that equation would simply be x equals to c minus b divided by a. But algebra goes beyond that. So algebra is basically manipulating expressions where you have both numbers and some sort of pronumeral or, or a variable that you want, you want to solve for. And then basically just going from that. So there are many ways in which we can manipulate expressions around to make them a lot nicer uh, and a lot more appropriate to use. So in this video, we're just going to do a little bit of revision and we're going to do a lot of exercises on the stuff that you should be comfortable with from year eight mathematics. And then hopefully from that, we can just move on and introduce new topics. So in the first question here, we're told to simplify the following expressions. So we know that when we have something like this, we take all the expressions basically that contain the same pronumeral so in this case, x is called the pronumeral because that's the, the letter that is attached to the numbers. And then the numbers attached to the pronumeral are called the coefficients. So if we want to manipulate this expression, all we need to do is just um, add or subtract the numbers in front of the x. So in this case, we have 2 plus 5, that's 7. So 7x minus 4x. And then we can just subtract those two, so this becomes 3x. So that's the expression simplified there. For this one, we do the same. So we try to group all the terms that contain the same pronumeral. This one is y here. This one, though, contains y, but it contains another letter, so we cannot really group it into the same kind of category. So we're just going to have to leave it as it is. So in this case, we're going to have 7y minus y. That's going to become 6y and then we're just going to have plus xy. Now we could simplify this even further by noticing that we have a common factor on those these two expressions, and that common factor is the y. So what this means is that you can actually take that y outside, and then you can just gonna multiply it by six plus x. And the reason we can do this is because you know that you can actually just expand this out by multiplying y by 6 and then y by x and it becomes the same expression we, we started with. So when you're simplifying algebraic expressions, the main thing you want to do is to express it in its simplest form. So factorizing is always a good way to reach the final answer. Now we're going to go with c. This one is fairly straightforward. Now we have minus 4x, but notice here we have a minus times a minus, so those two are going to become plus, so minus 4x plus 4x. And in this case, they're going to cancel out and become 0. Now here, let's have a look here. So we have x here, x over there, and we have y here and y here. 3x minus 3x, that's 0. And then we have 12y plus 5y, that's 17y. So this whole thing is just going to become 17 times y. For this expression here, we have the same scenario, but now, instead of just having a's, we now have a squared. So, remember, if you have anything other than a that you gotta simplify, you have to treat it as its own pronumeral. So, in this case, a squared is just gonna be a term separate from a. So, we're gonna group these two into a different category. So, we start with these two here. So, we have 3a plus 7a, that's going to be 10a. Now, for these ones, we're going to have 5a squared minus 4a squared. That's going to become plus 1a squared. And you could do the same thing now where you do the factorizing. If you notice that you have 1a that is common between the two terms. So you can take 1a out of the equation. And now you have 10 plus a here. 
and that works out because you can multiply this by that it becomes 10a if you multiply a times a well you're multiplying a letter by another letter that is the same so you're essentially just adding the powers together so if you have this to the power of one this to the power of one one plus one is two so that's going to become a squared and then for this one we're going to do the same thing again so let's have we have y here and we have xy and we have yx but this doesn't matter because we know that we're multiplying things the order of the products does not affect the result so in essence this is the same as saying that we have xy so technically this would actually be the same as this one here so we start with this one so we have minus 4 minus 3 that becomes minus 7y for this one we have 3xy plus 2xy that's plus 5xy and once again we can factor out the y because we recognize that it is a common factor so this is going to become just to make it nicer I'm going to swap these two around so that I'm going to write the minus 7 on this side so it looks nicer so we're going to have y times 5x minus 7 and you can always expand that just to check that this is the correct expression you should be getting alright so we're going to continue with this now we have to simplify these expressions so whenever you're dividing two expressions together you know that you can pretty much just subtract powers of the same so in this case we have the n here and the n here this is to the power of 1 this is to the power of 1 if you subtract both then it becomes n to the power 0 and anything to the power 0 is just 1 so that means that this and that can cancel out and we have done that in previous videos so that becomes 9m over 6 and now we have a fraction here which we can actually simplify even further so this is going both of them are divisible by 3 so this is going to become 3m divided by 2 continuing with the next one we notice that we can simply just divide this so we can simplify the fraction that becomes 4b very easy one this one simple multiplication we have 7 times 3 that's minus 21 because that's a negative there and x times y well they're different per numeral so there's going to be x times y here and that's pretty much it now for this one let's just expand the expressions so you should be quite quick with this ones already but just in case you have forgotten how you do it you multiply this by each of them so 2 times x and then plus 2 times 3 which is 6 4x times 3 we multiply the 4 by the 3 that becomes 12x now we have a minus here so 4 times 2 that's 8 and then we have x times y so minus xy now let's see what we have here well we're gonna just expand this so that's going to be y squared times 3x that's 3xy squared then we're gonna have plus y squared times that so that's gonna become 4x squared times y squared and the last one is going to be minus 5y squared in this ones we're going to solve for x so that's what I was talking about in the beginning this is the major application of algebra it's just to solve equations and inequalities which is something that we're going to study later on so starting here we're going to solve for x what can we do to this equation to actually solve for it well first of all we need to get rid of any extra terms we have on the left hand side so this 3 is a bit annoying so how about we subtract a 3 from both sides of the equation so that this becomes 0 and then 9 minus 3 becomes 6 so this is going to be 2x equals to 6 now we want to solve for x so we need to get rid of this 2 so one thing we could do is just to divide both sides by 2 so that means that x is going to be equal to 3 and you can always check an, uh, an answer to an equation because if you plug this value back into the equation you should actually be getting the same result so in this case you have 2 times 3 that's 6 plus 3 equals 9 so that's correct now for this one we have the same situation so first of all get rid of any terms that do not contain x so we can subtract 3 from both sides that becomes x over 2 equals to 5 minus 3 which is 2 and now to get rid of this 1 over 2 here we can multiply both sides by 2 so the 2 cancels out with that one so this side is going to become x and then this multiplied by 2 is 4 so the answer to this is going to be 4 and then finally we have this expression here 
in this case we have all these terms are divided by 3 so one thing we could do first is just get rid of that 3 by multiplying both sides of the equation by 3 so this becomes 2x plus 1 3 times 3 is 9 so now we can rearrange that so now subtract 1 from both sides that is going to become 2x equals to 8 and then finally we can divide both sides by 2 to get x so x is going to be equal to 4 and we can always check that's correct by plugging back into the equation so if we put a 4 here that becomes 2 times 4 that's 8 plus 1 is 9 and then 9 divided by 3 is equal to 3 so that's correct so in the next videos we're going to be talking a little bit more about algebra and we're going to introduce some new concepts and new more challenging problems